Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. It is a Friday. It is time for our Wildcat headlines. But the most important headline of all, Drew, is that the Wildcats are going to Ireland exactly one year from today. The Cats and Clones will kick off. We're one year away from the Wildcats hosting Iowa State in the Aer Lingus College Football Classic in Dublin, Ireland. Secure your game tickets now through a travel or hospitality package by visiting Cats2Ireland.com. You can choose from three city, two city, Dublin only, or drive Ireland travel packages. All inclusive travel packages include premium game tickets with the option to add on pregame hospitality, luxury hotel accommodations, an exclusive K-State welcome experience, and more. Game day hospitality packages include premium in-stadium hospitality with food and drinks and premium game tickets. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now at cats the number 2 ireland.com and join us in turning Dublin into wildcat country. So, that is headline number 1, 1 year away from K-State and Iowa State in Ireland. Now that we're further away from the announcement we've known for a while that these two teams are going to play there, have, what are your thoughts as we currently stand on this game taking place for K-State? Because we know it's a Big 12 game being taken away from Manhattan. It's a rivalry game being taken away from Manhattan. It will be the second straight year that you only have six home games on the schedule now. What is your, your mindset and your thoughts on what's going to go down here with Iowa State? Honestly, it's still crazy to think that it's happening. Like every time that we've done the ad read, I've just I've just kind of laughed because it, it's it's it doesn't make like a lot of sense really, but I think that it's super fun. Like it, it sucks because you kind of look at K State's home football schedule next year, and it is pretty rough. So like having the Iowa State game would have been nice. Yeah, embrace this season. Yes, embrace this season, football and basketball wise, because. Ooh, the basketball schedule is even more loaded in conference play at home. Uh, but you need to really cherish the season because the, the football schedule in, at home next year is pretty bad. So that, that part kind of sucks, but it's a fun opportunity. I know that my whole entire family, I think, is, is going to this. Uh, so I think that that will be really fun. You've never been out of the country. Yeah. So, I mean, that, 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 that's a big W for you. I have to renew my passport, and I keep reminding myself. I need myself, to get one. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Uh, the other thing that I don't know if, I mean, I, I might be in the, the minority and you might be as well, uh, but I didn't realize how close, like Paris is only an hour and a half flight from Dublin. I didn't realize that until a couple of days ago. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew that everything over there was like really close, um, but I didn't like, I it didn't ever cross my mind to, uh, get on a flight and go somewhere different. I, I don't know that that's something that I'll be doing. I think I'll just go to the game, call it good and uh, get back to the, to the United States uh, where that, I'm you yeah. know, most comfortable and known to be. That, that might be one of the least surprising things that you've ever said. Yeah. You know, <laughs> get in, get out for the game. That's really all that I'm there for. So it's interesting. You say that, Hey, my whole family is probably planning on going to this. What was their initial reaction when this was announced? Was it always excitement? And, hey, we're going to go. Or was there some of the normal, which I, I think a lot of people had was like, why are you taking this game away from Manhattan? Why are you doing this? Like, was there the angst and then the, hey, it's happening. And I'm, I am excited to go watch K-State play in this game. I, I think there's, there's a little bit of angst, but I think that, uh, we've been trying to figure out like a, a time to do like a big family vacation. And my parents especially want to go to like Europe and my dad, especially. So this is like them using this as like a, an excuse. And it, it's fun because kind of like you, it's like a, Oh, well, K-State's playing. So we, we've got to go like it's, it, and I think that everybody's kind of treating this as a once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, one of my sisters is like a huge traveler and always wants to find like travel plans. So she's in charge of everything. Yeah. Interesting. It's a, uh, it, it'll be, it'll be fun for uh, a lot of the people that make it over there. And like I said the other day, this is going to be fun for the people that you're sitting at home next year and you get to watch K state, the very first college football game of the season. Like you don't have to pretend like you're going to have to this Saturday that oh, I'm, I'm really excited for Florida state, Georgia tech. Yeah. We're all excited for football to be back, but like, 
you really you get to be excited it. for football. You don't have to be like, oh, I am so pumped to stay up till 11 o'clock to watch Hawaii and Delaware State. Will be fascinating. I've always been a Hornets guy. I uh, used to do dynasties with them in NCAA basketball quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Delaware State. Uh, go go, go! get it done out on the, uh, the island. Uh, so that is the news right there to start it off. One year from Ireland, K-State and Iowa State. Moving on, though, I wanted to bring this up because we've talked – so much recently about where K-State is going to finish in the Big 12. What is the public perception of them? We think that, you know, a lot of people on the outside are undervaluing the offensive line and not really understanding the full situation. I think I've found a national media member that is starting to come around and understand it. Earlier today, or yesterday, I guess, actually, Bruce Feldman wrote his updated story before the season kicks off on his college football playoff projections. And you see in the graphic that he uses, there are two players there. One is from Ohio State, and the the biggest picture in the foreground is Avery Johnson. And the title, College Football Playoff Projection, Why Kansas State is In, Utah out after training camp. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have found a national media member that respects the Kansas State Wildcats. Bruce Feldman is buying the Cats. He's moved them into his playoff projection. Here's what he says about why he made the switch between K-State and Utah. In my first projection, I had Utah here. No knock on the Utes, but I'm going all in on the Wildcats. I'm buying quarterback Avery Johnson as that big of a breakout star. So he talks about him, brings up how good DJ Giddens is, also mentions Dylan Edwards, uh, and then he g- dives into the offensive line. And he's like, yeah, Cooper Beebe is gone, but Connor Riley is accomplished at developing players and standout Easton Kilty from North Dakota has transferred in. Then he adds just how good K-State is going to be in the secondary, mentions Jordan Riley, the Ball State transfer, Jacob Parrish and Keenan Garber's transformations, and kind of most interesting here, is that he names Donovan McIntosh in here as a future star of the secondary, which very well could be true. I, I will say I was listening uh, to Bosco's boys, uh, and I don't know if it was if it was Wyatt or Brian Smaller that said it, but like they were hyping up Donovan McIntosh in there. Uh, and so it's interesting then that you get the national guy to say it, where it's not like he's just going to roll down a roster and throw a dart and be like, yeah, th- I'm going to mention this young guy like I know what I'm talking about. I'm guessing that comes from somewhere Uh, and then talks about how, hey, some of their toughest games are at home. The only tough one that's on the road is Iowa State. Uh, So he is buying in on K-State being the Big 12's college football playoff participant now. Yeah, Bruce Feldman, ball knower. Andy Staples, ball knower. it's It's been fun to kind of see this whole transformation uh, the one thing that I would like to complain about, if we're going to complain about something about this, is that Andy Staples and Bruce Feldman both have K-State as the four seed. A great point. And that's probably not where you want to be. Yeah, I, I saw some other national media uh, people kind of talking, and I ended up talking about this with uh, some other people about how it is kind of dumb in a 12-team format that you give your top four a buy, but then you send the four seed probably to Atlanta or New Orleans to face the SEC runner-up. So <laughs> you want to avoid the four as much as possible, but still fun that K-State yeah. has been the national media, the national spotlight. And I think that it's not something to really take lightly or take for granted because in the current landscape of college football, the, there was no real, I don't want to say reason, but it it probably wasn't on the top of Bruce Feldman's list, probably two or three months ago to want to really talk about K-State and the Big 12 uh, because the SEC and Big 10 have just been so dominant in the headlines. So to kind of see that and for most of the story to be about K-State making the playoff and why, I think was really interesting and really fun. So uh, in addition to the K-State being bumped in, he has flipped some other teams around. He's got Ohio State as number one. So actually he would have the winner of Oregon and Memphis. Uh, taking on K-State, which would be a better circumstance because you're not going to play one of those games close enough to where Oregon is for some overwhelming home field advantage, like what you're talking about is 
we know that if K-State plays in New Orleans, Alabama fans are going to show up. If they play in Atlanta, then yeah, Georgia, Alabama, whatever a SEC school you throw their way is going to be there. So uh, that would actually probably be a best case scenario that you would get out of it. So that uh, I thought was interesting just seeing that because we know we know Andy Staples, our guy over here at On3, loves Avery Johnson and K-State, but it's nice to see somebody else hopping on board. Okay, the final thing that I want to bring up this week for headlines is frustrating, sad, weird. It's it's any kind of emotion that you can think of. But besides it has, normal. Yeah, yeah, besides normal. Uh, it has to do with some idiot – dare I say, dumbass uh, on on social media, on Twitter, where he is impersonating somebody that would be on the K-State football staff. The only difference is, is he's using the name of somebody that is not on the K-State football staff. Uh, but he tries saying that he's the assistant director of player personnel. He's using a picture of Tremaine Carroll as his profile, and he has been – DMing and tweeting and sending fake offers and game day invites to just unsuspecting uh, recruits on social media. And this is all kind of an interesting thing because, number one, it's really stupid. This guy's a loser. Number two, it kind of highlights like how the, the recruiting industry can be sometimes because there are so many kids out there that want to play college football or whatever sport you know like growing up we all wanted to, to do something like that but then you know some of us grow up and it's like I knew that I was not good enough to play golf at K-State so I was like yeah I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that I I'm just gonna go to school there uh my brother he said I know I'm not good enough to play golf at K-State but I do still want to play so he went to go play at a division two school like we all make these decisions and realizations some kids don't make those realizations yet. And so they think, hey, I can do this. This is the way you do it. Here's my here's my tape. Here's my info, whatever. And so they start, you know, they'll take any morsel of, hey, I might be getting a look here. I might be getting an offer and running with it because it's cool. It's fun. I, I get that. Uh, and some people just don't have as high of a media literacy as you need in the year of 2024. So this guy has been sending DMs and whatever else the kids and uh you know scheduling like game day visits and it's really sad and disappointing for the you know the the athletes that do uh kind of get roped into all of this but then also really stupid for this guy uh, what do you what do you make of the fake twitter coach persona that this uh <laughs> idiot Dion brown cfb is i have legitimately never never seen anything like this <laughs> like there are some cuz real quick we we've seen recruits like fake recruits before yeah like in a su substantial way uh and that's been notable because like the yeah those have blown up in some ways but yeah this is the the inverse and i don't know what the end game of this is i mean maybe it's the thought that you're adding a ton of followers cuz this guy has over 12,000 followers uh on his account and i think most of them are like high school kids and their coaches or trainers or whatever that are trying to to bring them in. Yeah, I, I'm curious about the end game. I'm curious about who this person actually is. Um, you just, it, the whole thing is very bizarre. And like, it's not something that when I woke up this morning, I thought that we were going to even have to like remotely talk about. And then it leads to like, like what you have, like, was that the guy that offered the Colorado state coach or the Colorado state quarterback 600 K? <laughs> like there's, yeah, so that's... Many, there's so many things that got to go with this. That it's like, what in the world? And like, what, what's the end game? Why are you talking to these guys anyway? Like I saw screenshots of messages mm -hmm. that this guy has sent. And uh, it's just like, oh, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, it, it, it got so far that really the reason why it got attention today, I think for people like us or people on, on KSO, was because Hank Jacobs, who uh, is actually employed by <laughs> K-State Athletics, uh, he had to post a tweet. The, the director of football administration at K-State had to post a tweet and be like, 
yo, this is not somebody affiliated with us. Like, and that tells you that they have had kids reach out or, you know, check in or something's gone down where this has been brought to their attention. And that's where you go, man, this is, this has gone too far, but yeah. Uh, what the first, the third post in the thread that was about it was a uh, shout out to JB golden 20. He said, found the guy who offered those CSU players $600,000, which now you start to think like something like this really could be true. It's funny to joke about, but we already said who in their right mind thinks that the Colorado state quarterback is worth $600,000 to come be Avery Johnson's backup. You're an idiot if you think that's true. Uh, so, yes, Jay Norvell, you're an idiot. I will say that. It's incredible that the two biggest idiots in college football coaching are both in the state of Colorado. Uh, just kind of an interesting note uh, there. But, yeah, this this absolutely seems like maybe one of the sources of the Colorado State ridiculous NIL accusations uh, that K-State was trying to poach their quarterback and receiver. But, hey, the receiver, if he wants to come to K State, go for it. Uh, he, I think he's actually good at football. I'm not so sure about the quarterback because I saw Colorado State fans going. There's no way he's worth that much. So, if even your own fans aren't going to say you're worth six hundred thousand, then I can't imagine that another football staff is thinking that. Yeah, it's it's a truly bizarre thing. Like I, I have also seen like the fake offers, like fake recruits or whatever. This is like a whole nother level of. Like you just have a lot. Do you have too much time in your day if you can do this? And, and like this is the other thing too. Like you, you kind of talked about it in the the thread on KSO too. Is that like doing this to kids is really bad because there will be kids that think that like we are affiliated uh, with K State football yeah. on, the, on the football staff, asking us to like review their stuff and everything. Uh, so to really kind of take advantage of these kids is, is really bad, obviously. Uh, and a little bit creepy if you kind of get get in that level. And especially you you look and this guy's an Alabama fan and also didn't delete like his prior tweets. It's like if you go to his replies, he's like all in Auburn fans replies for, like from before when he decided to take on this fake persona. So I really, I, I want to know who this is and why, and why they chose K State if they're an Alabama fan. Yeah, it's it's such a, a strange thing. I it's going back to try and find uh, one of them, but like I I get random DMs from times uh, that were like different athletes and other recruits are like, "Hey, coach, here's my film, check it out." And I'm just like, I'm not a coach. Like I, I cover the team. But no, like you, you don't want to be messaging me about this or, you know, you get other stuff like I, I Alec Bussey, RIP, not dead. I uh, was talking about this the other night. Uh, he sent uh, like a screenshot of DMs that he got from a kid uh, that is trying that is uh, trying to get recruited. He's a 2020 uh, six plus kid. So he's not even this next recruiting class uh, type of guy. And he just sent a DM to, to Alec, and it was a screenshot from a like a Power Four programs good luck this week graphic that they send out to all of their recruits sometimes or whatever. And he says, uh, "Do you know who makes these? Like, can you hook me up with one of these?" And this is like, I mean, most kids know that those are coming straight from the the school, and like Alec is just running the Iowa State twenty four seven site. He's <laughs> he's not Mr. Graphic Design over there, but like that's where this comes from is that all of these kids, they want an opportunity and they're starved for the, the you know, the accolades and the the attention and everything that comes with it. And I, I don't blame them for it. Like it would be fun to be a college football recruit, but so many kids don't have the realization that they're really not. And then when they do get some kind of hope, they're going to latch onto it. And that's what this dumb account is preying on. So it's, it's one of the fascinating things, but more than anything, I think uh, I just uh, I'm just going to take it and run with it. This is probably where uh, the the Colorado State guys got their six hundred thousand dollar offer, which is probably why it ended up not coming to fruition. Because you're I to me, you're silly to turn down six hundred thousand dollars at Kansas State as opposed to what I mean, maybe uh, a sponsorship for the the tram ride to the top of Pikes Peak. 
when you're going to school in, at Colorado State, whatever it may be. So, yeah, this is uh, one of the weirder uh, social media interactions going on for, for K-State right now. It's also just bizarre in the world because he's, like, very – into like he knows when things are happening like uh when they could start reaching out to 2026 kids like he had a tweet about that and and, like the whole thing just so strange like i i know that it'll never come out like who the person is but i would love to figure that out maybe uh maybe he's the next guest on the kso show once there you we go. figure it out. Well, you know, we I, I'd love to have a coach on. So uh, get him on here and <laughs> see coach on. See how it's how it's going there. But yeah, bizarre, uh, weird way to end the week, but uh, a lot of lot of fun jokes can be made about it once you know that uh, nobody gets, you know, seriously uh hurt in this in terms of like you know, if, if you convince a kid and his family to drive to Manhattan from wherever you're at or something, or um, like, it's just, uh, this is not a good experience for anybody that gets roped into this. So yeah, uh, like that's the other thing too. Like what, what happens? So say he convinces somebody to come to like the UT Martin game. What, what, what's the end game there? He's not going to be there. (laughs) Well, yeah. And like, what, like how pathetic of a person do you have to be to do this to like 16 year old kids? Like that's the that's the strangest part about that, uh, but you know you're sitting around your buddy's like, hey, what are you doing over there? Oh, I'm just DMing 16 year old boys trying to get him to to drive five hours to Manhattan, Kansas. Like, oh that hey that's totally normal behavior. Uh, but we are talking about Alabama fans, so uh, we know that they're not the most normal. I, I saw somebody say that the, they found uh, Mike Vernon's burner account. Could you imagine? Uh. I might actually change my tune if if he was going to that extent to like long con troll. Uh, but look, as as much as uh, I don't like the the KU and social media persona that Mike Vernon can be at sometimes, uh, I know for a fact he's not this stupid. Uh, and I know that anybody that wants some kind of level of respect in the world is not this stupid. Uh, so yeah, very, very, very strange. But. Uh, be careful out there, and this is a good reminder, even if you're not a 16-year-old trying to play college football in a couple of years, maybe brush up on your your media and social media literacy. Uh, especially probably a good reminder now that we're uh, less than three months away from an election. Uh, that tends to be the, the time where people really could exercise some, uh, you know, some, oh, is, is this real? Uh, well, maybe do some checking on that, like a quick Google search just to see. Pretty much anything I see now on on social media, it's an instant, okay, either I know this is BS or I am Googling it and I'm looking for one or two of my own like secondary sources to be like, okay, yes, uh, ESPN has also posted about this. Okay, yes, MLB.com also posted about this. I believe this, you know, <laughs> I'm not just like, Mm, I don't know. That looks right. You know, my, my, my crazy uncle, he threw out a random theory that, you know, this could be happening. I buy it. I, I do think that Bobby Witt Jr. is cheating at home uh, and that the Royals are stealing signs. Yeah, I believe that. Okay. I buy in. So yeah. Also, uh, also just goes without saying it's 2024. Don't, don't pretend to be a recruit. <laughs> don't pretend to be a coach. That's all. That's all we ask for. Yeah. I mean, it, do you, do you think that you could be a recruit, uh, like fake being a recruit? No, because I, I I don't have like the I, I just don't want to have like the time or energy to do that. You know? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's the weird thing too. Like, there are a lot of other things that I would rather do than spend my time faking this out. But good to, good to whoever is doing this and uh, have fun with whatever ends up going your way. So, all right, that'll do it for us today. Uh, when we talk to you again, we will have a Sunday show, but when we're back for the start of a brand new week, a real new week, we will have game day preparations underway because Monday, Chris Kleiman will have his first in-season press conference, and we'll probably on Sunday just ask Fan everything he knows about the UT Martin Skyhawks. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching the KSO Show. 
back again on Sunday with Fan joining the two of us. And a reminder, one year away from Ireland. So Cats2Ireland.com if you want to be there to watch the Cats and Clones in the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. We'll talk to you again on Sunday. See you later.